Hello, welcome to my YouTube channel. All right, this is Sichamba Jacob. All right, so uh, okay, uh, in today's video, we'll try to look at uh, uh, paper one, GCE 2020. So if you've not subscribed to my YouTube channel, kindly do so, so that uh, you're not left out and uh, set the notification. All right, so we'll start with question one, where we asked to simplify. So I've been given this expression of which we are expected to simplify. So how do you simplify this one? It will just be, uh, you check the way it looks. What number is here? There is one here, there is positive one. So whichever number is here should be multiplied by whatever is inside here so that we get rid of the bracket so it's 1 times b which is equal to b 1 times negative a which is equal to negative a minus 2b so i've gotten rid of the brackets the next thing will be to group the uh the like terms or to arrange our work according to like terms so there's 2a minus a plus b minus 2b so the way it is here we can work out what is here 2a minus a is a and b minus 2b the answer will be minus b so this is the solution for question one we go to question two Question two. So on question two, we have been given this expression of which we are expected to evaluate. So how do you evaluate this one? The first thing you check on the power. So this power has got a negative. We need to get rid of this negative first. How do we get rid of the negative or how do we rearrange our work so that this negative disappear? So it will be like this. one this negative will become one over everything here 64 over 125 and the power now has changed to positive so you see it's a positive power the negative has gone up and it has turned into one so the next thing here will be to now calculate or to evaluate what is inside so one over the cube root of 64 over 125. 1 over 3 is uh, the cube root. So this and this are just the same. Which is equal to 1 over... We need to find a number whereby if we, it multiplies itself 3 times, it gives us 64. And that is 4 over the number when it multiplies itself three times by itself three times it gives us 125 and that's a five so we have this since we are dividing this fraction into one so it will switch it will be like this and our answer can be like this or we can finish it up we can say four into five is one remainder one over four so this is our our answer we go to question three so for question three uh, given that the line three y is equal to x plus six and y is equal to k x plus uh, 12 are perpendicular find the value of k so i've been asked to find the value of k which is here the first thing when you hear perpendicular or parallel, the first thing you need to think of is the gradient. So you check this equation and this equation. Which one can we pick to start working with? We can pick this one because this one has, has, got, has got no k. k is in here and k is what we, we want. So for us to find, to, to find k, we need to use this equation, to use the gradient of this equation. 
So it will be 3y is equal to x plus 6. So we need to divide by 3 by 3 by 3 throughout so that we remain with the y only, which is equal to x over 3 plus 2. So we have this, meaning we have the gradient. The gradient is the coefficient, which is here on at x. So this is our gradient, which is equal, which is 1m is equal to 1 over 3. Whatever is here is our gradient. And the gradient of this other equation, we write it as 2, m, 2, m sub 2 is equal to k. So there is a property we are going to use whereby uh, these two equations, if they are perpendicular to each other, their gradients should give you negative, uh, they should give you negative 1. So in this case, we we'll get this gradient which is 1 over 3, it will, it will change. It will be reciprocated and the sign will change. What sign is here is positive, so it will become negative. And to reciprocate, to get what is down goes on top, and then what is on top comes down here, which is equal to, because 1 can go into, into 3, which is equal to negative 3. So the value of k is equal to, negative 3 done we now go to question 4 so question 4 we have been asked to uh, factorize completely this expression have been given this expression so how can we factorize this one we will factorize this one by grouping whereby we we'll just put the brackets here okay we check is there anything here that can be found here and it can also be found here? A 2 can be found here because 2 can go into 6 and it can also go into 4. Also A can be found here and here. And then we open bracket. So we say 2 into 6 is 3. Uh, into uh, A it's a 1. So remain with the X. Minus 2 into 4, it's 2. 2 in, uh, A, sorry, A into A. I'll remain with Y here. Here, a negative can come out because a negative can be found here and here. And also, B come out because it can it's here and also here. So, we say negative B into negative 3BX. It is 3X. Negative, negative will cancel and B and B will cancel. So, negative into 2by is negative 2y. This is because negative into positive, it will be negative b and b will cancel. So, you need to check here if this and this are the same. It means you are doing the right thing. Just get it, one of them. And here... You get whatever is here outside here is say minus or plus whatever is here. So we have uh, factorized. This is our answer. We go to question five. So under question five, given that A is the point, this A is a point uh, negative two comma one, and B is a point or is a point. 1,5, find the distance from A to B. So this means the distance. This is a modulus. This is a distance. So the formula for finding distance will be uh, distance is equal to root of x sub 1 minus x sub 2 plus y sub 1 minus y sub 2 power 2 here so this is the formula so what we uh, what we need to do here is to go to our coordinates and label them so this will be our x sub 1 comma y sub 1 and this will be our x sub 2 comma y sub 2 so we can just plug in our our formula 
So we know this is distance, what we are looking for. We say root of x sub 1 is negative 2. And then minus x sub 2, it's here. It's 1 power 2 plus y sub 1. It's here, y sub 1. It's 1 minus y sub 2 is 5. So now we can work out things here. This will be equal to negative 3 squared. I'm putting the brackets because there is, a, there is a negative sign here. So if you don't put, we get a wrong answer. Plus negative 4 squared. 1 minus 5, it's negative 4. Then here, when you say negative 3 squared, the answer is 9. Plus negative 4 squared, the answer is 16. And when you add... This will give you 25, which is equal to the root of 25 is 5 units here. So this is the answer. We go to question 6. All right, so for question 6, we have been given uh, or we have been asked to use set notation to describe the shaded region in the diagram, this diagram below. So uh, first thing, which should be coming in your mind once you see a diagram like this one and they ask you to describe the shaded region is to come up with the, the new uh, Venn diagram like the blank one like this one and then you indicate you put numbers you let this region be your one this one two this one three this one four this one five this one six and this one this one seven and the outside should be eight so they all have put. And then you try to think, just looking at what is happening here. This is Q and this is R. So if you can see, of course, this is Q intersect R. So you say Q intersect R is equal to what? So Q intersect R, if you can see here, is 5,6. Q intersect R is here, like this, 5 comma six but in the shaded region here in the shaded region there is this part five is not included so how do you show that five shouldn't be included so of course if we see nicely this is p complement like p has not been shaded so it should be p complement what is p complement so if you come here uh, P complement will be equal to uh, 3, 6, 7, 8. So meaning what is not found in, in P, that's what it means, P complement, what is outside P. So 1 is in P, 2 in P, 5 in P, and 6 in P, but 3, 6, 7, 8 are not in P. So now, which one can help you shade this region where there is 6? If you check here and here, I think it's Q intersect R intersect P complement. Because if we say union, meaning we we'll get everything, we only need 6. And this will be equal to the intersection of this and this will only be 6. That's where 6 is shaded. It's here. I mean, yeah, on the region where 6 is, it's where it's shaded. So your answer in this case, or the answer in this case will be Q intersect R intersect P complement. So this is our answer. This is how you find this work. We go to question 7. So for question 7, uh, A we need to find C power T or C transpose. So C transpose, you check your C, it's here. So C transpose will be equal to, you get this C, matrix C, and then switch the rows to be columns. So first row has got six and D, I mean seven and six. So you change seven, and six down here. So what is here should move like this and what is here should also move like this. So here of negative one and zero down here. So this is the solution. 
we go to B, question B, they are saying we find a value of X for which A, B, there is a statement, this is very important, A, B is equal to C. So A, B is equal to C, meaning the multiplication of vector A, vector A is 2, 3, 1, 0, and the multiplication of B is negative 1, I mean the uh, matrix B is negative 1, 0, X, 2 here which is equal to, like according to the statement, which is equal to C. C we know is 7, negative 1, 6, and 0 here. This is our C over here. So we are multiplying now. So it will be row by column. Row by column. Okay? So 2 times, 2 times negative 1. It's negative 2 negative 2 plus 3 times x is 3x which is equal to 7 here so now here we can solve this equation and when we solve we have something like this 2 will come this side you to change it's negative 2 it will be positive 2 so 3x is equal to 9 you divide by 3 divide by 3 so x uh, is equal to 3 into 9, it's 3. So the value of x is 3. That's the value of x. It's 3. So we go to question uh, A says, a plane flying at a speed of 900 knots takes 5 hours to fly from A to town uh, B. From town A to town B. Calculate the distance between the two towns. So we know that uh, uh, the formula is speed is equal to distance over time. This is the formula we're going to use. Now, uh, whenever we see that the speed is in knots, just know that uh, the distance is in nautical miles, unless if the speed was in kilometer per hour. So this is in knots, meaning we are dealing with uh, nautical miles. So what is the speed here? Speed is 900, which is equal to what is distance? What we are looking for, we put x, we don't know. And then time is 5 hours. Here we can cross multiply, and once we cross multiply, you find that x is equal to 4,500. Yeah, 4,500. And uh, look at this, I found 4,500, but am I supposed to leave it like this? No, I need to show that I'm dealing with the distance, which is in nautical miles. So I'm supposed to put Nm, the units, to show that it's in nautical miles. Nm. Okay, we go to, to B. Question B. Point Q on the longitude 85 uh, degrees east lies on the equator and is due east of P. The time difference between P and Q is five hours. Calculate the longitude uh, on which P lies. All right, so when it comes to uh, finding the uh, time uh, difference, we know that uh, one, uh, one hour, it takes one hour for the Earth to rotate 15 degrees. So this should be just be known, should be put in, in, in your head. If this plane moved for five hours, so how did it, uh, what should we find? We should find the difference in uh, longitude. So the difference in longitude, we're going to put uh, five here. We don't know. So this difference, we don't know. So we can cross multiply. This is X and it will give us 75 here when we say five by 15. So what we've just found here is the the difference in longitude so we can use this difference in longitude to find the point p so if we want to find the difference from p to q so you say q minus p 
is equal to 75. So uh, this P and Q are both to the east side. So what is Q? Q is uh, 85 degree. We've been told that Q is 85 degrees, which is equal to, I mean, minus P, which is equal to 75. So the difference of P and Q is giving us 75. So we can solve for P. This will give us negative 10 degrees. And then the value of P will be equal to 10 because we want to remain with P divided by negative 1 divided by negative So it's 10 degrees. So the value of P here we found is 10 degrees. We go to the next question. So question uh, 10A, the probability of a girl not wearing a necktie is 0 0.55. What is the probability that the same girl will wear a necktie? So we're going to use a, pro a property, one property of probability. So probability of something happening plus not happening, something not happening should be equal to one so this is very important so we know that the probability of this girl wearing a necktie we don't know we're going to put x plus the probability of not wearing okay is 0 0.55 which is equal to one so we solve this equation so when we solve one minus uh, 0 0.55 our answer will be 0 0.45. So this is the probability of wearing is 0 0.45. We go to 10B. So on 10B, uh, given that 8 power x minus 1 is equal to 16, find the value of x. So here, how do we find the value of this x? The first thing should be balancing the bases. So here it will be 2 power 3. 2 power 3 is equal to 8. So this and this are just the same, which is equal to 2 power 4. 2 power 4 is equal to 16. So we have balanced the bases. This is 2 and this is 2. So we can now concentrate on the power powers. We've just gotten this and this. And solve. This will be equal to 3x minus 3, which is equal to 4. 3x minus uh, is equal to 4 plus 3. We solve. We are solving for x. 3x is equal to 7. You divide by 3. Divide by 3. x here will remain with x, which is equal to 7 over 3. So this is the answer. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, for watching, kindly subscribe to my YouTube channel. If you've not done so and like my videos, please don't even forget to set the notification bell so that you get notified whenever I post something. You just click on it. Bye.